Okay, um, what I wanted to do is uh, give a, a demo of the uh, the bevy now that I've got um, pitch bend working. And uh, the last video I had mentioned that, or at least on the forum I had mentioned that I was trying to figure out how to get pitch bend working on the, on the, on the trumpet. Um, commercial ones use some sort of variable resistor or rocker on your thumb, um, but I had so many things going between the chords and the um, the octaves, the way I approached the octaves, uh, I, I really thought my head would explode if I had to try to figure out how to get one more thing because I don't want to take, I, I didn't want to get a situation where if I was in corn lines and I wanted vibrato that I had to take my hand off the horn line. I didn't want to change the way I was playing a tune just to get the vibrato, to get the um, pitch bend is what I was trying to do. So what I did was I um, bought an accelerometer which is called a MEMSIC 2125 which is used I think in the iPhones and iPads or something similar to it. And um, what it does is measure acceleration of the chip. And it's a very small surface mount chip. I'll cut to another video where I'll, I'll show you exactly what it looks like inside the trumpet. And so that's the MEMSIC 2125. Pretty small. I'm going to try to put my finger in there and touch it. You can see it's, it's very, very small. You can also see if I come back a little bit, the rat's nest of wires it took to get this thing all connected on the bevy. And then the battery containers right there, battery part. But each one of these boards has the, the switches. This is the, the old version of the MIDI board. And then up on the top is the, uh, the pressure controller in there. You can see that. It, with the, I have the, the actual piping come through the, the Tigon tubing and then go up into the uh, pressure controller. I don't think it needs to be that long, but I, you want to put the pressure controller upside down because they're very moisture sensitive. And so I put it um, hanging upside down so it doesn't have any chance of water puddling into it. So that's it. So as you play, it's looking for that, that acceleration and what you do is you convert that acceleration to a, to a tilt change in the thing. So if I went up to, um, did a little line, well, and I'm on a flute here. I didn't want to do that. I'm on a trumpet now. So it gives me a capability to do the pitch bend. Depending on how you program your patch, you could get it semitone like I do there. So I can take that B and slide it up to a C. Uh, you can do it a full octave, uh, you can do two octave. If you're uh, doing synthesized stuff and you're doing riding the storm out and you want to do that, that full rise of a couple of octaves, it's, you just program your synthesizer and this thing, that little bit of that tilt, it's about a 45 degree tilt will give me that full, that full up. So it's, it works pretty well. As you can see, it's very, very accurate. It's very smooth. But what I didn't expect was that once I got it working, I found out that I had vibrato. And all I needed to do, since it's an accelerometer, it's me measuring acceleration, and if I just rock the trumpet back and forth, and I've taped this a couple of times, and you really can't see me rocking it. It's so much, it's such a small amount of rocking. But if I hit a... Hopefully you can see that little bit of rocking. That gives you that vibrato. It allows me, if I'm lower and I want vibrato and I want a little slower vibrato, it's very easy to do that. Or if I want to bring it faster. And it can get ridiculous too. If I do a horn line and you wanted to make it really sound ridiculous. So it, it's, it's truly measuring acceleration of the box itself and gives me all that capability. So it's pretty exciting. Besides pitch bend, I now got acceleration. Um, to med to do the vibrato and, and it's like you would in a trumpet. You just you just start vibrating, um, start moving the trumpet back and forth. Kind of fun, easy to use, it's intuitive work pretty well. Problem is that when you're on stage and you're moving around a lot, this thing gets kind of interesting. Um, so sometimes you got to flip it off if you don't have something that you, either that you got to really focus. You got to focus on keeping it steady. Uh, might be better to maybe put some place where I can temporarily shut it off um, if I'm, I'm moving around too much, but uh, I think it's just going to be learning how to use it. Um, because as you can see, when you're moving around, <laughs> If I 
became a good jazz trumpet player, which is a maybe maybe never, um, then you could see how you could use this to um, to really sound very jazzy. Um, it's got that full capabilities of, of controlling every pitch of every note as you play it. Um, also, last time people mentioned that they would like to hear what this thing sounds like um, with a real good patch, so I went out. Um, I know I needed to. I had a Roland Sound Canvas 55. Went on and bought a Roland XV 2020 and bought some patches from that at Patchman. And um, so you can now hear, I've, I've got a trumpet that sounds very breathy when it's low. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty nice sounding, um, and I'm just learning how to use the patches better. I'm trying to get the, the attacks sounding good. What was interesting is that I had done a lot of programming to get the, the old Merlin Sound Canvas working and sounding good. In my ears, um, what I was able to do with these patches and with the XV2020, all of its patches, was to eliminate all that code. So the code's much simpler because you really don't need it to, to force that, that good sound, that brassy sound. I had to do a lot of that coding before. So code's a lot simpler. I've um, also um, got a PCB layout board, so I'm working on laying out the, the switchboards and where they attach into the accelerometer and the, bre and the pressure switch and then have ribbon cables between them because as you saw in the inside of this thing it's quite a rat's nest and if I can get rid of all those wires and get ribbon cables it'll be a much more robust and um, more maybe commercial, uh, commercial um, item I could probably start making up those boards and, and, and selling them to people and, and so that's not going to happen anytime soon it's, it's taken me a long time to learn layout, um, circuit board layout first and uh, so it could take a while but I'm definitely working on the Bevy 2 which will have um, instead of just breadboards where everything was mounted on it, actually have um, printed circuit boards that take care of all of the other capabilities. I, when we started off, I had flute playing. Um, I really like the flute that, that Matt has, and I'm starting to use that in some of the songs I'm playing. And um, what I did was I have the horn lines, the major minor, chord, major minor chords, and then the horn lines, but instead of um, giving all three, I just did it two of them and shut the third one off so I could have some interesting um, harmony when I'm playing other instruments. So that's kind of fun and um, right now I, I mean everything's down a third and, and then the, the, for the minor uh, you know plus one semitone so everything is um, a little bit restrictive but depending on what patch you have um, then you could you could shut off certain ones and get different types of harmonies that you want to get. Um, with the Roland Sound Canvas uh, 55, I had I had pretty much one thing programmed. So I had 16 MIDI channels, and this thing allowed me to switch to five different one plus the drums um, to give me those those chords um, in batches of three. With the um, with the XV2020, I've got that 128 times, and um, so yeah. I, I, I figured on stage it would be fairly easy to, to switch from channel 1 to channel 2 to channel 3 to all the way to whatever. I could even program into this thing to actually do that switch. I haven't done that yet. Um, so you could have any number of combinations of harmonies and things. So um, it gives you kind of a good capability. So anyway, so I, I think I'm done. I think I'm pretty stable. Uh, I like the way it works. I got a little switch to shut that t pitch bend off when I'm, when I'm not using it in certain songs. and. Um, everything else is, is working well. And uh, so I just want to give everybody an update and let you know what's happening with the accelerometer and pitch bend. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Bye.